Hey gang, we are in Minneapolis today and we are right next to the Minneapolis airport and we're actually approaching a very famous cemetery called Fort Snelling. It's a massive, massive cemetery honoring the dead of our vets. But we're here to see one special vet today and this has to do with 9-11. We're gonna talk about it. We're in. It is June 1st, the day after Memorial Day, and we're here to take a walk and find the grave of a man named Thomas Burnett Jr. who could probably be considered one of the first, if not the first, heroes to start and win the battle against the terrorists. And we're talking about September 11th, of course, September 11th of 2001. Let's take a walk and find Tom's grave. This is a massive cemetery, massive. And you will notice that every single grave, every single one, has an American flag. It's just amazing. The tombstones are perfectly aligned. I'm going to give you a shot up here in the distance so you can see how that hill is rolling up. And it's, it's almost like an infinity. You know, it's, I stand here and it's really hard to imagine that all of these people served bravely our country to preserve our freedom. It is truly inspiring. We all know what happened on September 11th. Now Tom caught an earlier flight because his daughters were at their first day of kindergarten and he wanted to see them and it was a, the Flight 93, United Airlines. He was returning home to the West Coast after his business trip. And as fate would have it, the, the flight was delayed about 40 minutes. And they, right as they took off, of course, the other attacks started unfolding on the, on, the, on the World Trade Center. So because they left so late, everything, the plan was kind of thrown off for the hijackers. And what happened was the hijackers, as the other planes, they took over the plane, they burst into the cockpit. And by the way, they recovered the flight recorders. So all of this you could hear. They killed the pilots, all the people in first class. There, there weren't a lot of people on the plane. They shoved everybody in the back, in the back of the plane. And they just were saying, oh, we have a bomb on board. And that was their ruse to keep everybody kind of quiet and in line. That was the play. That was the playbook of the terrorists as they manhandled the airplane. Now, when they turned the airplane around, you know, they, the airplane was heading westbound, of course, and 
not being, you know, nothing more than probably simulator pilots on video games, they made some pretty erratic maneuvers. Now, I'm a pilot, and I can even tell you, I still don't like turbulence. I know most of you guys don't. And if anything radical happens, and big turns, and other stuff, you just get really nervous in your seat. And they like, they made like a nosedive. And they were, they were doing, and people were screaming. Could you imagine being one of those people? So everybody just started calling, they started calling home, calling their loved ones. They're like, this is it, we're gonna die. Could you imagine that feeling, guys? But there was a lot of bravery on that flight, led by Tom, who they called Tommy Burnett. And he didn't panic. He started to formulate a plan. Once he was able to talk to Dina, he talked to Dina three times. And she finally was able to tell him that what was going on. They are, hey, they are, they just flew jets into the, the World Trade Center. So they all knew they were doomed. So Tom took the lead with some other brave men that he was sitting near. And they formed a group. And his last words, he, he had his last words to Dina. Ended his call by saying, don't worry, we're going to do something. Well, they rushed the cockpit. There was a terrorist there kind of guarding the cockpit and they they took him out and the, co the 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 recorder caught a lot of this and a lot of it was also caught in the background sides the background noises coming over the phones from those others that were talking to their loved ones and i might say completely unre unforgettable sounds terrifying sounds. They took the, and by the way, we are looking at the back of tombstones, and if you are, if you are a veteran, your wife is buried with you, and her name appears on the back of the tombstone, just in case you didn't know. I don't think I've seen one tombstone without a flag, guys. This really, this just blows me away. They took the cart, the beverage cart, and they started using it as a battering ram. And again, the flight recorder picked that up. Bam, bam, bam. And you could hear the terrorists on the recording panicking. What should we do? Should we put it down? Not yet, not yet. Now guys, they were headed. They were headed to either the Capitol or the White House. Can you imagine? Can you even imagine if that had happened, if that jet had gotten there? Well, they were totally committed, and what the terrorists then did at the controls is started really tipping the wings, flying extremely violently to try to throw those people that were trying to batter the door down, trying to knock them off their feet, which they did. And it was an absolute grand struggle.
it's kind of ironic that we're here right next to the airport. And by the way, that is a salute. I saw some men dressed. Let's see if we can see right over that way. They are doing a gun salute. There's some type of ceremony going on. And I'll bet you yesterday, which was Memorial Day, this place was, was absolutely packed. Look at all the wives' names on the back of these tombstones. Oh my gosh, the humanity. It's, it's unbelievable. You can hear on the, the cockpit voice recorder the sound. Actually, you can hear Tommy screaming, roll it, roll it, which they think meant that he was talking about the cart. And you could hear the banging on the cockpit door. And then somebody screamed, we're going in. And then you could hear the terrorists saying, put it down, put it down. They were unsuccessful in getting into the cockpit, but they were successful in sacrificing their lives to not sit there and do nothing and take that airplane down with those terrorists before it reached. It was 20 minutes outside of Washington. It was almost there. And what the terrorists did is they rolled the plane on its back and pulled up on the yoke and just drove it at 500 plus miles an hour straight into the ground. The voice recorder was amazingly found and intact 20 feet underground. Look at all the flags, guys. I'm sorry, I just can't, I just can't get over this. It, it's, you have to be here to really comprehend the sight. It's just unbelievable. This is unbelievable. So they ended up stopping the terrorists from hitting the White House or the Capitol, which saved hundreds, if not, who knows how many lives? Who knows how many lives? So all those people on that flight, you know guys, it's, it's just people like you and me, people that are living their dreams, have their, you believe in what your destiny is gonna be, your future, you live for your future, you remember your past, and you wonder, would you have the bravery that these, like Tom and the group and these people, you, you just, you wonder. And you never imagined that would be your destiny. Well, we have arrived at Tommy's grave, and can you tell whose grave it is? I'm sure there were a lot of people here yesterday, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that come here constantly 
Look at all the flags and, and remembrances. Isn't that great? Look at that, guys. Look at this scene. Take it in. Take it in. I, I can't tell you the emotion I have right now just looking at this, being here. You can feel this, you can feel the spirits of all these people, these good people. Thank you for your service. And here is Thomas Burnett Jr. It says, Cadet U.S. Air Force, May 29th, 1963, September 11th, 2001. Citizen Soldier, Flight 93. If you look on top, you will see coins. Now, a penny means you stopped and paid your respects. And I see pennies. A nickel means you attended boot camp with the person. A dime means you served in the armed forces with them. And we see some dimes. We see three dimes, four dimes. And a quarter, you were with that soldier when they were killed. Now, I see a quarter, and I'm going to say that is metaphorical, that that man or woman that put that quarter there was akin and felt as though they were, they were with Thomas. This is, this is a brave man we're standing before everybody, a very brave man. His father said tearfully, he said, my son, we were in Normandy, father, son, and they were at the beach. I think it was Omaha Beach, it could have been Utah, but they were at the, the cemetery and there were a couple of veterans talking about their actual experience coming up on the beach, being peppered and sprayed by the machine guns and the crossfire from the German bunkers. And Tom looked at his dad and he said, he was almost shaking, he said, Dad, he was, he was listening to the men speak and he said, gosh, Dad, I don't know, I don't know if I could have that kind of bravery to be able to do that. How could they do it? How could they be so brave? Well, little did you know, Tom, you had it in you. You did it, man. You were our leader there, and you, you were the first soldier to win. You and the group, all the people, you led that group. You were the first to beat the terrorists in a battle. And paralleling that with the police and the firemen, that, that was ground zero, guys, where we started to fight our way back and beat these people. I'm going to put a penny on here. Out of respect. Well, Thomas E. Burnett, Jr., rest in peace, sir, and thank you for your service.